am Beverly Welch. We're here at the Arbor Gate today in Tomball, Texas with our dear friend Angela Chandler. Good morning. From the Garden Academy. Now here on the Gulf Coast we have this little creature um, called a fire ant. Yes, we do. And uh, it seems to cause a little bit of problems, definitely some discomfort. It does. And, it, and when we get into rainy periods, they, you know, brings them up out of the ground. So oh, practically overnight you have these mounds yes, appearing. Yes, they do pop up overnight. So as we were talking, there are synthetic controls available. There are. The Texas Two-Step Program does work well, developed by A&M, um, but it needs to be used in the landscape. Right. It really shouldn't be used. It's not approved for use around your edibles. So any place that you're growing fruits, vegetables, herbs, you want to stick with an organic control. So Angela's here today to share with us her brilliant recipe on, on some fire ant control that is 100% organic. Oh yes, it is. So we're going to bounce around a little bit. Why do we want to control the fire ants so desperately, aside from the discomfort and, like you said, in a play area where they're harmful to children or pets? Right. We really don't want to just annihilate fire ants, do we? No, we really don't. Uh, one of the things that a lot of people don't realize is that there's two kinds of fire ants. Uh -huh. Texas has a native fire ant, and then we have the red imported fire ant. The red imported fire ant is that enemy, that one that's going to start you screaming and trying to get it you know, off of your legs. Yes. Uh, but our native fire ant is not as aggressive, um, they, they, and they don't compete as well with the fire ant. So one of the problems is that the more we eliminate our native ants, the more we're favoring the red imported fire ant. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is make sure that we actually are targeting just that red imported fire ant and leave our natives alone. Now how would we tell the difference? Well, aggression. The, uh, the native fire ant has the same basic lifestyle habits. So the mound is going to look the same and the ant is going to look very much the same to anybody who's not an entomologist. Right. Um, but you can tell by aggression. If you just take the a handle of a tool and you poke around in that red imported fire ant mound, they're very aggressive and they're gonna rush up the handle of that tool. With the native fire ants, they're not as aggressive and they kind of seem a little lazy about it. Yeah. Uh, they're not gonna be quite as aggressive. So you can tell and then you still don't, you know, they're still capable of stinging you. Right. But if they're in a place where it's not gonna bother people or pets, right. you can sort of ignore them. And that actually applies to the red imported fire ant too. If you don't have to, you can leave a mound or two to act as a beneficial in your garden as well. And they are a beneficial. What they purposes do they serve us in the garden? Yeah, the reason they're considered a beneficial is that they are a fairly uh, aggressive uh, predator. Uh -huh. They eat ticks, they eat fleas, they eat fly larvae, they uh -huh. eat termites. Right. So um, they deal with a lot of pests that we have in our yards that we might like to, to see gone. See eliminated. Um, uh, you, you even mentioned to me that some orchard managers bring fire ants into the fruit orchard. They do. I have several friends who are totally organic orchard managers and if they find a fire ant mound someplace, they'll actually dig that mound up deep enough to get the brood uh -huh. and they'll take those shovelfuls and put them at the base of their trees. That may not be for everyone, but they know that they're aggressive at chasing down uh, the, the, the negative insects. And they're also housekeepers. When you have any residue from your aphids or, or white fly, That's they right. come they and clean, clean the tree. So when you see an ant on your fruit tree or any other plant, it's not a sign that they are harming your plant. They're coming in and cleaning up the residue. That's correct. And they don't actually kill plants. I think that's another misconception about the mound in the ground. That's that, right. That it, they are eating the plant. They do not. No, they're not eating the plant. Um, they can, you know, maybe undermine a few plants from time to time and cause a problem. Um, in a favored soil, they'll actually raise uh, their mound up around the base of a plant, which is kind of irritating, but they're not attacking the plant itself. Right. So, having all that said, we do want to control them to a degree. We do. So what is the safest, most effective way that we can organically control a fire ant? Okay, so let's talk about that. Okay. Um, the, 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 there is a formula that's been around for a long time. I don't know who can lay original claim to it, but uh -huh. we won't worry about that. And it's really pretty simple, and it's with things that you normally have in your garden shed okay. anyway. So we have horticultural orange oil. Okay. Most of us have that because orange oil is really good insecticide for other, other purposes. We have horticultural molasses, right. um, which 
feeds bacteria, right. which is a good thing. And then we have, uh, you can use compost tea or in this case, liquid humus, depending on whether you want to make your own or buy it here. Uh -huh. And then um, the dish soap is going to be used as a surfactant. Um, it also does work to break down the exoskeleton of the fire ant, but this orange oil does a really good job of that. Okay. So we're going to use uh, equal amounts, two ounces, which is a quarter of a cup, so it's an easy measure. Right. So two ounces of each one of these in, uh, in two gallons of water. Wow. Um, mix that in a bucket. doesn't have to require any special agitation. As soon yeah. as it's blended, it's ready to go. Uh, then you can take it to the fire ant mound start pouring on the outside of the mound so that you can okay. kind of corral them in there and then sort of like that concentric circles work your way into the center pouring slowly okay. so that it has time to penetrate down into the mound itself. So your method of application is important. You don't want to just walk up and, and just, just dump, dump it in there. No, you want to you want to make sure that this is having time to go way down into okay. that brood nest and have the most positive effect. Within hours you'll see many many uh, dead ants on the surface of the soil as the, re the colony that's left brings them up and dumps them out. Okay. Sometimes on a small mound, one application is fine. Uh, every once in a while people will say, well, it just moves the fire ant. Well, that's not technically true. Yeah. Fire ants always have more than one entrance. When one becomes contaminated, they'll close that off and use another one. That's right. what you're seeing. Okay. They haven't moved. They've just created Relocate. a new front door. Gotcha. <laughs> Remodeled. So, right, you, right. You might have to treat that little area uh, again, but generally between those two, it's going to get it. And this, this is, recipe is perfectly safe it for our containers. It is plant safe. Okay. That's the amazing thing about it that you can pour it right through a container if you have fire ant problems there. Uh, you can pour it right around your, your plants in the beds and it's not gonna harm the plants at all. In fact, there's a lot of the elements of this are actually beneficial to your soil. Yes. We know that the molasses is and yes. we, we know that uh, the humus is. And this part of the reason this works is that it increases uh, the natural soil bacteria that are sort of antagonistic to the fire ant. Right, right. And we know that beneficial nematodes are another way of handling them. Yes. You can introduce these to the garden um, and the molasses will actually help feed right. them and keep them happy too as well. And these products again are in Arborgate yep. blend, Every so bit that's of it. why right. it's here. They are. Now you have another one here. I do. Anti Fuego. The reason I have Anti Fuego is that Anti Fuego is these basic ingredients all mixed into one. Okay. So if you happen to have these already in your garden shed, because they're very useful right. for many other things we do in the garden, then you can DIY your formula, and it's on our website yes. on the blog. And um, if you don't have these products, and you just say, "Gosh, I just need a quick solution to get rid of the fire ants." Any way goes your answer. Perfect. Perfect. Well, thank you so much. You bet. And we'll, we'll get after them, but safely. But safely. Thank you, Angela. It was good to be here.